Yeah, so Shroud and Sacriel, who in full disclosure, I did not know who Sacriel was, they they announced that they're making a game. And this is a kind of a different approach. This is a trend now, it seems, and we'll talk about that. This is two content creators, Shroud, very famous FPS pro from Counter-Strike days. I think Sacriel's known more for, like, survival games, if I'm not mistaken, yes. but I really don't yes, know. Yes. Um, but they're making a game with Splash Damage, an existing AAA developer. We made Brink, Dirty Bomb. They supported Gears and um, I remember Brink. and Halo wow. back in the day. Mm -hmm. And their most recent game was a massive flop because it was a Stadia exclusive. That was uh, it was called Outcasters, and it was about like multiplayer spell casting game, and it is now shut down. So they released like a two minute video talking about they're making an open world survival FPS. And I, I'll let you start. What was your reaction and your your thoughts? I was kind of annoyed. I'm not gonna lie. I'm tired. I'm tired <laughs> of seeing these streamers make video games and yeah. mask themselves as like knowing. I don't know. Like it's it's cool to like. I guess Crowd got thirty million like, from Mixer. He had to invest that money somewhere. Man. He had to invest that money somewhere. Yeah. Well, he's probably making money off of this. I'm pretty sure Splash Dance. They're gonna like ask for, for an ROI. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I'll give you this money to develop the game, and you're gonna give me back three percent or yeah. whatever. Well, I mean, like the way that I'm. You know, I think generalizing it is that like Shroud is just like I don't know anything about video game development, uh, but you're using my brain and my voice to say that you're making this game. Uh, yes. I don't know. I mean, like, I, have I feel that like question Shroud is a you. comfortable guy. Go, go. Comfortable. Yeah. Um. By comfortable, I mean I mean like he doesn't care about taking. Doesn't risks. take risks. Yeah. He yeah. took a risk when he went to Mixer and he got paid thirty million. Well, that wasn't a risk for I don't six think months of risk. work. <laughs> well, it certainly paid off. What's up, yeah. Bunny and Clue, by the way? Um, that was my question to you. And and so I think the answer, in some regards, depending on which studio you're talking about, is, is different. But so in Midnight Society's case, you have, there was four founders of the studio, Dr. Disrespect being one of them. Mm -hmm. in, in this game's case, which is called Project Agatha, I think is what it is. Uh, um, no. <laughs> not, it starts with an that. A. I got it. It starts with an A. I have it right I think it's here. Agatha. Boom. Boom. Where is it? Tell me. Oh, whoops. Wrong, wrong, wrong Twitter account. Anyway, <laughs> you have a AAA studio, and then you have two content creators coming on board. Then you have 100 Thieves, who's making a game. And from what I can tell, they're assembling or hiring. I, I don't know. Astrid, okay, I was close. Not at all. I had the A correct. I don't really know what 100 Thieves is doing, I guess, to be honest. It seems like they're putting together, like, a team, but I'm not sure that that's actually I'm what's happening. Sold. That's how I'm they're... sold. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you, is do you think... Let's start with this one, with Shroud and Sacriel. Yeah. Are they being used more as marketing heads, like, to, to help sell this game? Then they actually are like making. Like, obviously, they're not coding the game. They're not directing the game. We know that. Mm -hmm. But like, do you think that their creative input is actually significant, or are they kind of just handing money over? Like, okay, we're helping fund the development of this game. We're gonna help market this game. We're gonna get you know five percent of the profits or whatever, mm -hmm. and we all make money. Like, what 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 do you think is going on? I think that there is actual some like significance to what they're offering mm -hmm. um i would imagine maybe sacriel being more like invested in this but that's just basing what i know off of their streamer uh you know personas yeah um like i said i think Stroud is a comfy game like a comfy person like he doesn't want to take huge risks unless there's an actual turnaround of an investment for him mm -hmm. the mixer thing you know jokingly like oh what what a flop but that guy walked away with a lot oh, of yeah. money 30 million dollars for now, six months of work. yeah he walked away without take the only risk that he took right there was being memed on and it's shroud like literally the guy's a walking meme on his own he and he care. recognizes that he's he does not care walk to the um, bank with those memes um so like whenever it, whenever it comes to like the shroud and sacriel thing, I don't know. I think that they might have some significance to it. I, I only we only know based off of what they did with their announcement teaser. Mm. Um, so we won't until Which was I nothing. See the Let's game, be honest, <laughs> the teaser was nothing. There was no the was screenshots, nothing. no concept art. <laughs> right, nothing. We got a PlayStation Five logo is what we got. Remember yes. that? Yes. Yes. Um, 
So, like, until we could see more gameplay and see anything of actual proof of concept, then, yeah. like, I'll, I think I would have, like, a more, like, generalized opinion. Yeah. When it comes to 100 Thieves, from what we saw, I don't know, man. Like, that game came out, like, just the pacing of it. Who the hell I wants that? I think they're making a tactical shooter at the end of the day. It's going to be, like, a Valorant-style game, I think. I don't think it's going to be tactical. It kind of looked like a weird um, run-and-gun game. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. I, I think... That's I, a... That's a that's a game that wants to sell you like the the same way like uh who was it that's to sell you cornflakes <laughs> cornflakes back in like the nineties was just like hey we want to make a game with our logo in the game so they put the disc of the game instead of every box of cornflakes and then every they were like hey we had over seven hundred fifty percent sales in cornflakes X Quest. yes checks checks quest there you go they're like Man. we had so much <laughs> that that's, just got that's a remake I... that game got a remake. Oh my god! No kidding! Like like a year or two ago, they remade Chex Quest. That's actually hilarious. But that's what I think. A hundred thieves is doing right here. I I don't know. Like, I just it's gonna be whatever Rocket Mortgage sponsorship game that they have right now, and it's just it's just. Well, I think that game's probably gonna be laughable. I think it's pretty interesting that the different styles of approach. So you've got what Shroud and Sackreal are doing. In my opinion, they're essentially sponsoring an already AAA development studio. And saying, like, mm -hmm. we're putting our stamp of approval on this game. Like, what I see Shroud doing, what he talked about in the video, and I, I do see him doing this. Like, he's going to have a lot of feedback on, like, ballistics, recoil patterns of the weapons, things that he's actually experienced in from, like, Counter-Strike and Valorant. Like, that's going to be his creative input, right? The weapon system, basically. So, like, I do believe he'll be contributing to that. Uh, but it's an already existing AAA studio. And you've got Midnight Society, which was founded with dr disrespect who had game development experience himself he's a seasoned veteran yeah right uh, but they built a studio from the ground up and they have many triple a developers from halo call of duty uh the coalition everybody's favorite developer on board uh you know a lot of triple a devs but they started a whole new team specifically mm -hmm. for this project and then you have the hundred thieves approach which I think they're going to build a tactical shooter, personally. But mm -hmm. regardless, I have not seen any aims attached to that game from the development There's space that make, about that, it. Make, just that make me go like, oh, yeah, this is being developed by uh, the former, you know, uh, this guy who waits Counter-Strike uh, or, you know, whatever. Any, any, mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything along those lines yet. Um I mean, I'm not saying that the game won't be good. If you had to choose which of those three games... Oh, Dead Drop. Crowd's game, Dead Drop, 100 Thieves. Which one do you think is going to win? Dead Drop, easy. Yeah. <laughs> like, Doc, as a streamer, funny guy. I mean, like, if you were, like, no context, don't know who he is, and you jump into his stream, and at the same time he's talking about his game, you'd be like, this game's probably going to suck. Mm -hmm. um, as compared to, like, jumping into, like, a game with Nade Shot, who is playing at a very high competitive level for everything. He's playing a lot of Call of Duty right now. Yeah. Ranked. Um, you jump into his stream, he's like, yeah, our game's going to be awesome. You'd probably take him a little bit more seriously. Mm. But Nate Shot is literally my age, if not a little bit younger. He's, I think, 29, I 28. No, 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 he's over 30. He, he just hit over 30, I think. Um, but he's just a little, he's just, he, he has no experience with it at all. Mm. Um, same thing with Shroud. They get, they've got no experience with developing games. So... These are also two figureheads who have played games that are arguably not in good states. Dude. Yeah. You know, to, if I were to, like, go in a timeline and pick out all the bad things they had to say about the games and how horrible they are, <laughs> it would look really bad on them. The same way we talk well, about, Doc like, does hey, that every Doc day. <laughs> Doc does do that every day. But Doc, Doc, that's the Doc only thing that's Doc, right with Doc is that he's right. Well, and he's a character, uh, too. I mean, Dr. Disrespect is a character. He is a character, but he's also right. Um, despite the fact suck. of him being a character, <laughs> so like, no, like whenever it comes to like Activision, like yeah, Modern sure. Warfare, Modern Warfare Two really is not that great of a game, mm -hmm. uh, and it's still plagued with problems. It's still plagued with issues that their community just does they're genuinely the same does not issues like. for like a decade now. They're There's not been the same issues. Zero huge the, argument. The audio, the audio issue has been a thing for how many years? The footsteps and. And well, since, that's not what he argues. Since Warzone I mean, he, came out, he gets mad about it. Like he gets mad about yeah. that. But I'm, you're talking Doc. Yeah, but what yeah, Doc yeah. also mentions is that there's a, a problem with the game's momentum. There's a problem with the game's verticality. There's right. a problem with the balancing of the game. Thirty like, second animations. Did you see that the, video? 
That's my yeah, favorite Doc animation. video of many. I'm um, going to a 30 second animation. The, 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 pro, the, the point of uh, getting a reverse on somebody, right? It's all RNG. It's all luck. Yeah. Like, it, you can't amount that to the same way that Apex is. That's why Apex is the better shooter compared to Call of Duty yeah. in terms of uh, movement, momentum, higher and stuff skill like ceiling. That. Yeah. So that's that's where Doc is right. And don't get me wrong, Doc complains too much like sometimes oh I'm yeah like, jesus christ it's pretty salty a very salty guy um but he's right in in most cases that i think a lot of people don't seem to want to recognize with doc and that's probably why passionate people don't take him seriously very yeah. passionate man yeah 